We can turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we will read from verse 22 onwards. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse... Um, we'll actually read verse... 23 onwards, from verse 23 onwards. Hebrews chapter 11, from verse 23 onwards. Please pray this prayer after me. Lord, open my eyes to see your truth. Lord, open my ears to hear your truth. Lord, open my mind to receive your truth. Lord, open my heart to keep your truth. Let me be a doer of your word. And not a hearer only. Let me bring forth much fruit to the praise and glory of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Speak, Lord. I will listen and obey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Hebrews chapter 11. We will read from verse 23 onwards. Hebrews 11 from verse 23 onwards. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Praise be to God. We're going to go back to verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of king's command. Now, what is faith? We've seen this many times. What is faith? What is faith? Faith is the substance of, let's just go to verse 1. Let's just see what the Bible says about faith. What is faith? Let's go to verse 1, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. What is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means you're hoping for something, but you don't have it in front of you. What you're hoping for, you don't have it in front of you. That's what faith is. Faith is something that you know of. That means I know that this is true. I know that this is real, but I don't have it in front of me. That means God has said something about something and you have this assurance that this is mine, but you don't have it yet in front of you. When you have faith, God says, God will make the impossible possible. When you have faith in the word of God, that which is impossible will become possible. So now faith is a substance of things hoped for. Whatever you're hoping for, whatever you're looking to God for, with what God has spoken, God says, the evidence is not in front of you now. That means you don't have it in front of you now, but you know that this will come. You know, this is like you go and you, you get a ticket, right? Say you, you, you want to go to, um, the sight and sound in at Lancaster. You know, we took our church uh, a couple of years ago. We got the tickets and they gave us the tickets. And we have this little paper thing, you know, for 30 people or 25 people, whatever it is. They said that this is free. They actually gave it to us for free. And we got that, you know, those tickets, those are expensive tickets, but we got it for free. Now I can take the ticket and I can say, well, how can this be free? How can I get this? I don't think this can happen. What if I take my whole church and I go over there at the entrance and they say, well, you have to pay. What am I going to do? And if I have the tickets that says that admission one, admission one, admission one, and they give you 25 tickets if we were to ask for 25. Once you see the paper, what do you understand from the knowledge you have? See, faith is not something that you trust blindly. Faith is based on facts. So the facts that you know lead you to 
what you need to achieve so you look at the ticket and based on the policies you know if the ticket or the voucher has been issued and they say that it is free and they have actually given that to you even though you have not paid for it you know that this is granted this is guaranteed when you go there and give the ticket you can go in and watch the show faith in what god has said in the promises of god means what god has said it's like those tickets when you get to that place you are going to experience what you wanted to experience or what you actually were promised for so it could be anything it could be anything that we are seeking from god and god can give us a word and when we hold on to the word and say god you've given me this word i know that your word will not fail because the fact is just like the voucher says admission one that means you are given this admission when you go there you will be admitted but the moment you get the ticket does it mean that you're somehow transported and you are just inside there no you know that you will be admitted but what are you supposed to do when you get the ticket what are you supposed to do what are you supposed to do are you supposed to stay home and say well if this ticket is true then let lancaster come to me <laughs> let sight and sound come to me will you say that no what are you going to do you're going to take your car or take you know whatever transportation is and get to the place give the ticket somebody is there they get the ticket and then they let you in god's word is like that faith how do you actually make it there by faith faith in what the fact that you know that this ticket is valid that you know that when this ticket was given there was a promise that was made by who whoever was in charge of that department saying that you are getting this admission for free you can go there god is speaking to our hearts this hour whatever promise that god has promised us whatever god has told us it cannot lie because god is not a man that he should lie whatever god has spoken will come to pass in our lives so it is important for us to believe faith is a substance of things hoped for that means i am hoping for something i am hoping for something that means that something is a fact that i know but i don't have it in front of me but i know that i still have it isn't that beautiful you don't have it physically but you still have it god is speaking to our hearts today even though you don't physically have it when you have that voucher is it good enough is it good enough if you have that voucher for that show is it good enough it is good enough when i believe it and i have that faith that this will work and i want this what do i do now i make my way to lancaster i make my way to that place because i have faith in that ticket and the giver of the ticket god is speaking to our hearts today the promises that god has given to us and the promise giver cannot fail cannot fail cannot fail whatever god has given into our hands understand this his word is true it is bound to take place in our lives it will happen it will happen it will happen so now this is what faith is what is faith faith is hoping for something that is there already but it is still not there but you know that you will get it because you know that it is there it is based on facts not on something blindly that we believe that we cannot see no we know for sure it is there god's word is true it is a truth it has been proven over and over and over and over again in the lives of many 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 people and when you read hebrews 11 you see in the lives of how many people god's word came true and all these people in hebrews 11 accomplished big things for god big things for god so ordinary people became extraordinary people accomplishing extraordinary things because they had faith in the word of god see god has a plan for all our lives and the plan of god is not for us to just sit in some corner and do some little thing and and then just go die no it is for us to make lasting imprint on this earth in the lives of not 1 2 3 4 5 or 50 75 millions and billions of people because god is big we have a big god god so loved every single one here that he laid down his life when we have that concept why he came 
Because he loved us. Why he is giving us this promise? Because he loves us. Why he is doing this for us? Because he loves us. Why? Why he is protecting us? It's because he loves us. Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. But God comes and he says, even when you don't know, even when you never knew, even when you had no idea of, I've been there covering you, protecting you. So when you look at the life of Moses, now when you look at what faith is, the definition of faith, faith is something that you know that is there, but you don't have it in front of you at the moment. But you hope for, because you know that it is there. Jesus. Blood of Jesus. You know that it is there, but it is not there at the moment in front of you. So, God says here, when you look at Moses, let's just go to verse 20, 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. Well, don't get startled by whatever you see, because it's very same people will stand here one day to say how big our God is. So when you hear these noises, know that today you hear, tomorrow you will see the power of God. That's what faith is. Well, this is an example of what we are seeing right now in God's word, that these very people will stand here. That's what faith is. That's what we believe because we know. And I've said this before when doctor said, your son cannot speak. God opened his mouth. I have it written down from the doctors. When they said that he can't do anything, just put him in an institution, God actually did wonders in his life. This is who our God is. God does exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. So it's important for us to have faith because faith is expecting God to do something because he said so. Now every time we hear Daddy, even if you hear it 10 times, or 15 times, or even 20 times, or 100 times a day, mommy, mommy, mommy. Yes. (laughs) You know what gives us joy? Because the doctor said he cannot say anything. This was a child who was doing like this. "Mm," That's about it. But God opened his mouth. And so every time we hear mommy, mommy, or daddy, we say, thank you, Lord, for opening the mouth of this child, the the doctor said he can't. So God is big. He can do big things. And sometimes the enemy, when he tries to agitate our children or torment our children or try to make them feel pain or misery where sometimes they can't understand or explain, we know one thing. Just like we heard during worship, God allows it because there is a day where God is going to extract maximum. But God will use the very same people to touch and heal the lives of many other people who are just like them, suffering. Praise be to God. God is big. God is big. Our God is big. So when Moses was born, he was a baby, God put certain things inside of Moses. When Pharaoh said, every firstborn shall be, every every male child shall be killed, not firstborn, worse than that, every male child shall be killed. Because the promise of God that Messiah will come through the seed of Abraham was there. Satan was looking. He said, let me kill. Let me kill. Who kills? God doesn't kill. Satan kills. Satan came and said, okay, if the Messiah is going to come through Abraham's line, let me see if I can destroy this line. So he came and he said, let me kill all the male children because obviously Messiah is supposed to be a he. So he went after the male children. So he said, let me raise this ruler and let me say, Let me kill all the male children. But when God has a purpose for someone, no one can stop that. No one. So what God is doing is God is putting certain features and certain qualities in the baby. When the mother sees the baby, she says, I can't, I can't, I can't. This woman was a woman of faith. You know how many times people will say that and then they'll say, I don't want to, but you know what? I can get killed and they will abandon the child. But, Moses' mom was a woman of faith. She said, not only I can't throw this child or kill this child or give this child to the people who will kill this child, but I will keep this child. I will save this child. So there was this faith that was there, and this faith was God gave this and God will keep it. 
that now everything is not written in a detailed manner. If, if the whole story of Moses was written, then the whole Bible itself will only have Moses' story and that won't be enough. But God puts what we need to have in his word. And God says here, Moses' mom and Moses' dad, by faith, they took this child and they hid. So in order to hide, how many of you know when a baby is born, the baby is very different from a doll that you see in the store? You know, we have a lot of these dolls in the store where you can bring the doll and put, put a bottle and then you can change the diaper and put a little, you know, cradle and put the doll where the doll doesn't make any noise. But when a baby is born, we all know no one can hide the fact that you have a baby. It will scream every time he or she needs milk. The baby cries. That's how you know the baby is alive. The baby should cry when the child is hungry. It's normal and it's healthy. But how can you hide a child, a newborn? I mean, how many of you know when the newborn cries? They cry as if they are dying. That's how they cry. <laughs> they cry, oh, when the hands, everything shake and the face turns red and they scream their lungs out. How can you hide a baby like that? How can you do that? She had faith. The edict was... If your child is not killed, the parents can be killed. She had faith. Faith in the God of her forefathers. That this child, God is able to protect. God is able to protect. God is able to protect. See, she could have seen this as a totally different situation. She could have seen this situation. Think about this. I really want you to think about this if the Holy Spirit wants us to. She could have seen that situation and she could have gotten angry. She could have seen the face of the child and she could have gotten angry. She could have said, oh God, why did you do this now? You've given this child only for this child to die. Now I have to separate from this child. And she could have completely gone into this grief and depression and anger and bitterness. And she could have let the child die. She was not like that. You know why? She had faith. What is faith? Faith is a knowledge of knowing who God is. If I know that God is good and he cannot do anything bad. If I know that God is love and he cannot do anything bad for the people that he created in his image. That he so loved that he gave his life. If he gave his life for somebody, will he go and do any damage to them? No, he will not. She had that knowledge. So when this situation, there was the opposite situation where the child is born. The child looks beautiful and now there's a death sentence that is hanging over this child and over the parents that they don't give this child over to these murderers. Instead of becoming bitter, instead of saying that, God, if you were God, why should this happen? Oh, if you're really merciful, then why should you? Because we are your people. We are the descendants of Abraham. And why should we be like this? Why should the Egyptians have their children? And why should... My child have to die now. She could have thought that way, but she didn't. But instead of that, she said, I know you. You gave this child. You are able to keep this child. That's what faith is. When I know who God is, no matter what happens against me, no matter how Satan moves people against me, to make me get into despair and leave the very one who loves me, my faith will turn towards the fact that I know his nature. If I know this is wood, I will not treat this like paper. If you know this is wood, and if you try to say, well, this is paper, and you try to bang your head hard on this, you'll get hurt. If you know that God is love. God is love. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. In him there is no darkness at all. God is love and God is not hate. Satan is hate. God is love. God's word says he gives life and life more abundantly. Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. When we see all these things, we know who is moved by whom. Pharaoh is moved by Satan, not moved by God. But when I put my faith in God, in the midst of what the enemy is doing, I can actually not only overcome, but I can thrive. I can thrive in the midst of that 
adverse situation. So you look at Moses' mom. Moses' mom didn't give in to despair. She didn't give in to fear. See, you could have been afraid. She could have been afraid. She could have just said that, I don't know what to do. Now I have this child. I thought this child was going to be a girl. It's become a boy. Now I have to kill. Oh, I have to kill my own child. I have to give my child over to death. And they have to throw in the Nile River. She could have just started grieving and all those things, but she did not do that. She said, this child shall live. Do you know that if you trust in God and if you have faith in God, you can actually have power and control over that which is against you? Do you know that? Yes, you can. You don't have to be afraid of anything. You don't have to give in to anything. You don't have to bow down to anything when you have God. You actually have the power over your adverse situation. You actually have the power over everything that is opposing you. God is speaking to our hearts at this hour. Moses' mom. She see, she was a woman. A very strong woman. I like strong women. <laughs> with strong character. Who can do big things. Accomplish big things in this world. Moses' Moses's mom's name is written in the Bible. Jacobet. What was she doing in the midst of the opposite situation? In the midst of death. What was she doing? She was speaking life. In the midst of your opposite situation, be someone who will speak life. Don't speak death over yourself. Don't speak death over your loved ones. Don't speak death over your future. Don't speak negative things over your life, but say that. If negative things are brought before me, I'm going to speak life over it. Moses' mom spoke life over her child. She said, this child shall live. This child shall live. You know why Moses was given to Moses' parents? Because God saw they were people of faith. We need to be people of faith. If we want to do big things for God, if we want to accomplish big things in this world, if we really want to make a difference in this world, which we should, that's the real reason why we are here then we need to be people of faith based on facts that God has placed before us. We begin to move. Now we don't blindly do things or give in to fear or do things out of impulsivity because you're afraid, because you're sad or because you are happy, because of whatever it is, you react out of whatever you see. That's walking by sight Moving by feelings and moving by your circumstance. That means this is weaker than me. So I can actually lift it up with my foot. I can. I can actually push it over this platform. This is stronger than me. I can't push it from this platform. Someone who's stronger than me can push this. God is speaking to our hearts at this hour. If we are strong on the inside, we will not be moved by our circumstances. We will be people who will change our circumstances. God is speaking to our hearts today. That you will not be influenced by your circumstances. Rather, you influence your circumstance. That means you have the power to change whatever is around you. Not that. Whatever is around you is going to determine how you are going to be. Whether you're going to cry or whether you're going to laugh or whether you're going to be happy or going to be sad or you're angry or bitter. That means you're like this. Satan can come and just knock you down anytime he wants. He'll push your buttons whichever way he wants. And he will make you to move according to whatever he wants you to. But if you have the spirit of God inside of you, you'll be like this. No matter how your environment and your surrounding tries to push you, you'll be like this. Jesus said this. The wise man who built his house upon the rock. What happened to that house? Rain came, winds came, storm came, everything came, and it just beat upon that house. But that house on the rock. No matter what hit it, it stood firm. That means the faith was not shaken. The foundation was strong. You know why? Because the knowledge is, I know that God is working everything out and I cross over 
the mountain. I cross over the valley. I cross over the river. You actually take control of your circumstances, not your circumstances over you. You are not moved by any human being's words. You're not moved by whatever is happening. You know, how many people just lose it when their car breaks down? Or how many people just lose it when someone treats them bad? How many people lose it? Because the inner strength is not there. God is speaking to our hearts today. Moses' mom was a very strong woman. Very strong woman. No matter what happened in her life, she was not moved by her circumstances. But she was someone who moved her circumstance. Even though the law was in place, she defied that law because her faith in God was, my child will live. He will live. How many of you can say that? In my circumstance, I will live. My generation will live. My spouse will live. My family will live. How many of you speak blessings over your family? How many of you speak, speak blessings over yourself? It is important. What you speak, what you believe, and what you stand for is very important. If what I stand on is shaky, then I will actually fall with it. But if I stand on that which is not shaky and solid, then I will stand. So what is important at this hour is the truth. If I stand on the truth, then my faith is never going to be shaken because no matter what happens, truth is the solid ground. But if I stand on top of lies, then what's going to happen? When the winds come, when the storm comes, I will be shaken because the ground is a sinking sand. God is speaking to our hearts today. Moses' mom's faith was not on sinking sand. See, a lot of people can say, as long as you have faith, as long as you have faith. Have faith in what is the question? If you have faith in this, it's not going to work. But if you have faith in something that's immovable, then no matter what happens, you shall not be moved. You will have the power not only to not be moved, but actually move that which is trying to push you. This is the power of God. Whatever is against you, the Spirit of the Lord says, He will turn it towards your favor. Even today during worship, the Spirit of the Lord is bringing me clearly something that God brought to me. A couple of weeks ago here as a prophecy, again the Lord brought to me. There's someone here, by the end of the year you're going to give a testimony. Unexpected way, God moved things and God r raised you up at your workplace. There's a promotion, I kept hearing very clearly. There's a promotion, very definite promotion that is coming from the hand of the living God. We should not look at our circumstances. We should not look at what is against us and give into that. But we should look at what is against us and we should be people of faith. Faith in the truth. Well, I know that His power will cause me to overcome that. That means because I know I am strong, if I know I am strong and I am strong, then I can push this down. But if I am weak and I think I am strong, right? When you try to push it down, you will not be able to. There are people who cannot lift their leg, but they can think. So we cannot psych ourselves into thinking something about something when we don't have it. The point is we need to have the strength. When we have the strength and the knowledge that we have the strength, then we can do big things. God is speaking to our hearts at this hour. The faith of Moses' mom. In the midst of that which is against you, in the midst of that which is against you, in the midst of that which is against you, God is asking you this question. Can you stand against it? Can you defy it? Can you go over it? Can you trample it and say, because of Christ who strengthens me, I will be able to bring down this giant. And this is where David even though he was a little fellow, the giant was so big in his appearance, he was able to go and bring down the giant with that one smooth stone. Because he knew his inner strength, because he had inner strength. If he didn't have inner strength, he could have just gone and he could have said, hey, Goliath, and he could have talk, talked all his big talk and Goliath would have just knocked him off. But he had the Spirit of God inside of him. So it is important for us to have what it takes to overcome, number one. And number two is, it's important for us to know what we have when we have in order to overcome. So these are the two areas that Satan will come and attack. He will come and attack people. Keep them from receiving that strength. 
keep them out of the presence of God so that they don't have the inner strength. That they strive and strive and strive and strive and strive to get something when the strength of God can cause you to multiply supernaturally. Secondly, there are people who get the inner strength of God, but then Satan will come and say, hey, look at your situation, look at your circumstance, you're so weak and this is not going to work out. And what do they do? Instead of recognizing the inner strength that God has given to them that they've received from God, they look at the opposite situation and they give in to fear and thereby, even though they have that inner strength, they fail. So God is speaking to us today. Two things here, very important. From Moses' mom, from her life, she recognized that this God has given me the power to speak life over this child and to keep the life of this child, that this child will live, this child will live. Did that child live? He not only lived, but he made history. He made history. He made history. If you go to Africa, you'll have people called Moses. You go to India, you have people called Moses. You go to Israel, you have people called Mo From Jewish people to non-Jewish people to Gentiles, you have people with the name called Moses. You know where it all started? First in the heart of God. Secondly, in the heart of Moses' mom and Moses' dad where they said, Pharaoh, you say that this child shall die. But we say, because of the God we have, this child shall live. Shall we all stand up together? Thank you, Jesus. No matter what your situation is, when you receive the strength from the living God, you have the power to defy your circumstances. You have the power to overcome your circumstances. You have the power to speak life when death is staring at you. You have the power to have joy when distress is all around you. You have the power. God is speaking at this hour. You have the power when you receive his power from on high. Thank you, Jesus. 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 God is my refuge and strength. Hallelujah. He is a very present help in times of trouble. Hallelujah. He is there for us. God is for us. He's not against us. He's for us. God is for us. If we are on his side, he is for us 24-7. Your bread and your water shall be provided not by man, not by any owner of any job, not by any employer, but by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You don't have to worry about anything. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, he will lavish upon his children. Hallelujah. God is a God who strengthens his people mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, relationally. Hallelujah. He's a God who created man and he said, prosper, prosper in everything you do. Multiply, prosper, be well, be happy, be cheerful. Hallelujah. Our God is a God of joy, not a God of sorrow. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He's a God of peace, not a God of chaos. Hallelujah. Our God brings peace into the midst of the storm. Our God comes and speaks calmness into the midst of a boisterous situation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray now. Whatever area you have weakness, whatever area you have weakness, whatever area you fear, God, I'm losing control over this. Whatever area you fear, God, I'm not able to control my temper. And if you're a person who's moody, up and down, up and down, up and down, you say, I don't have control over my mind. I'm weak in my mind. I'm not able to make steady decisions. Or I am someone who reads a little and prays a little, and I'm not consistent in my prayer life. I'm not getting the strength that I need to get. God wants to touch you at this hour. God wants to bless you at this hour. God wants to give you that which you don't have so that you can have what it takes in order to be an overcomer in every situation. That you don't have to be dominated by anything that is around you. You are not born to be under. You're born to overcome. Hallelujah. You are not born to be under the control of any demonic force. You're not born to be under the oppression of, of anything. Hallelujah. God has called you 
to become an overcomer, to overcome every situation, to overcome every circumstance. For he is a mighty bondage breaker. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give yourself over to the Lord at this hour and say, Lord, restore me. Restore me. Hallelujah. Restore me. Hallelujah. Restore me. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord. Oh, Father, restore me. Hallelujah. You're the mighty mountain breaker. Hallelujah. You grind the mountains to powder. Hallelujah. You grind the mountains to powder. Tell the Lord. Oh, Lord, you grind my mountains to powder. As you were with Jacobad, Moses' mom, and you ground her mountains to powder, you grind my mountains to powder, Lord, in this week. In this month, O oh Lord, help me to gain and not to lose. Help me to overcome and not see defeat again. Help me to receive your strength of this hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You are the mighty mountain breaker. You grind the mountains to powder. You are the sun stopper. You're the Lord changer. You're the chain breaker. When you open, none can close. When you close, who can open? You have the power to withhold. You have the power to restore. Lord, restore us and we shall be restored. We're going to sing this again. Sing it as a prayer to the Lord. You are the mighty mountain breaker. You grind the mountains to powder. You are the sun stopper. You're the law changer. You're the chain breaker. When you open, none can close. When you close, who can open? You have the power to withhold. You have the power to restore. Lord, restore us and we shall be restored. You can mend that which is broken. You can build what you have broken. You are the name changer, you're the game changer, you're the show stopper. You can make what is mended, you can straighten what is crooked, you can give back what is taken, you have the power to restore. Lord, restore us. And we shall be restored. We'll sing this stanza one more time. You can mend that which is broken. Who can build what you have broken? You are the name changer. You're the game changer. You're the show stopper. Who can break what you have mended? You can straighten what is crooked. You can give back what is taken. You have the power to restore. Lord, restore us and we shall be restored. You form the nation in one day. You can turn our night into day who can go against what you say you have the power to restore restore us
much all that we pray Not for us, but for you Glory's sake, Lord, restore us And we shall be restored Come, Lord, restore us Come, Lord, restore us Come, Lord Jesus shall be restored come lord restore us come lord restore us come lord restore us come lord restore us and we shall be restored hallelujah thank you thank you thank Jesus. you lord we praise you lord for a holy word Thank you, Lord, that Moses' mother defied the law that was against her child to take the life of her child because she has faith, Lord. She had faith in you, the God who promised. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for teaching us that our faith is not built on lies but on the truth. Hallelujah. That God has spoken. Hallelujah. And what God has spoken, he will fulfill. Hallelujah. Yeah, if God Jesus. has spoken life over you, you cannot die. Hallelujah. Yeah, if God has spoken wholeness over you, you shall be well. Hallelujah. Jesus. If God has spoken again and again and again that your family will come to the altar of Christ and surrender their lives, it will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have more faith. We have more faith in vouchers from men than from the ultimate voucher, the Word of God, hallelujah, to go and redeem, to go and claim what's yours in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for breaking all the lies of Satan over our lives. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, the brokenness and hurt that we've gone through from the devil and working through people. Lord, the defenses that were built up not to be able to love not to trust, not to forgive. I thank you that you have smashed them with your truth. Hallelujah. We can love. Hallelujah. We can love again. Hallelujah. We can forgive. We can live free. Thank you, God. Like a little baby, Lord. That little child, Moses. The little baby knew no fear. It was safe. Because all it knew was the shelter of the parents' love. Oh God, help us to be like babies, Lord. To know that no matter what, you are with us. You will take care of us, Lord. You will see us through, hallelujah, through the valley of tears, hallelujah, till we stand on the mountain and declare to the world, my God lives, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mountain, you got to move because we have faith, not in lies, but in the living God who has promised Every promise in the book is mine. Hallelujah. What has God Jesus. promised you? Whatever he's promised, it's up to me to hold on to that ticket and say, I'm going to get what I've come for. Amen. It takes simple faith. God says anybody can believe. Anyone, anywhere in the world. The moment a person says, I'm going to put my foot down on the devil and say, I will believe. God says, come home. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Faith is the victory. What is it that overcomes the world? It is faith. Amen. Faith Amen. is the victory. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song. Think for a moment. I know we sang it last time, but think for a moment. Jesus. What is the mountain in your life? Jesus. Is it finances? Jesus. Is it a health crisis? Jesus. Is it Looking for reconciliation with someone in your family Jesus. or your whole family? Is it this feeling of despair that nobody understands me? Jesus. Have faith that God understands because he does. Hallelujah. He loves you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Believe. Jesus. Believe. Just believe. Jesus. And you see God open up the heavens in your life. Jesus. He will rain down blessings that you never thought Jesus. were possible. Amen. That's exactly what's happened to many of you and in Jesus. my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Can God do it? Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Is God able? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. hallelujah. My God is able. Hallelujah. Jesus. We're going to sing mountain. Move. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mountain, you got to move. Oh, mountain, 
You got to move. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. I made up my mind. I'm going through a mountain. You got to move, oh mountain. You got to move. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. Fountain. You got to move. Mountain, what is the crisis? What is the, everybody has a crisis. You may have crises, more than one. Jesus. God is saying to us today, through his word, remember, the receipt or the Jesus. ticket or the voucher Jesus. is only as good as the one who gave it to you. Amen? Yeah. Anybody can write a check. Anybody can write anything, any voucher, say, look, this is for you. I remember in the New York City subway system, Guys were going around with this thing called a metro card. It was a ticket. And they would go and try to sell it to people and say, this is an unlimited card, meaning you can ride all week long. It costs 20 some dollars. I'm going to give it to you for five. And people look at the man, look at other people, and try to wonder, is this for real? And if they get persuaded, and that man runs away, they try to use that card at the turn, so guess what? It didn't work. They lost their money. Why? Because they believe the lie. God is not a man that he should lie. He never lies. Hallelujah. When he says, I love you, and I'm telling you, I'm going to save you, I'm going to change you, I'm going to bless you, believe it because his word is true. Hallelujah. We have the receipt, the word of God, and God has spoken by his spirit. Make up your mind today. I'm not going to trust in anything or anyone, even myself, because I can fail. But God cannot fail. Hallelujah. His Jesus. promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Therefore, whatever he said, he's going to give me joy. I never knew joy. All I knew was a false high. Temporary high to high. Only to crash. Then to go and do something that will hurt me and hurt others. This vicious cycle. That's the plight of mankind. No matter where you look on the earth. Whether on the street or in some presidential palace. Man cannot save himself. Jesus came down to give us life and that more abundantly. The moment you and I say, Lord, come into my life. You know what? God will change you, I guarantee you. Jesus. Don't look to raise your faith. Just do it. Hallelujah. I want to ask, because earlier before the message, God put this on my heart. If there's anyone who trusts in Jesus Christ, and you want him to take over your life. This day can change your destiny. That's the truth. Believe it. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus today and say, God, I have nothing to lose, only everything to gain. Oh God, will you love me? I don't even know you. Lord, I don't even know you well enough. That's what the devil will say to keep you from God. God says, it's okay, just come. Hallelujah. I want you to come to the front. If you want Jesus Christ, to come into your life and give you real meaning, real joy, real hope, and a real future. This is your moment to say yes, Lord, and shut down the devil in your life. Hallelujah. Just come to the front. If you want the Lord to really take over your life, if you want him to give you all the blessings that he has promised, you don't have to be on the outside looking in. You don't have to be thinking, Lord, I need to get ready. I need to do other things. You know what God said? God said, you can never get ready enough. You can never clean up yourself enough for me to accept you. Because my standard is perfection. But I have come down and given you my hand. Put your hand in my hand and I'll take care of the rest. Come to the front if you want the Lord to be the Lord of your life. Hallelujah. And those who receive the Lord, if you want to affirm that today I'm saying again, 
to the devil, to the whole world. Jesus is who I trust. He is my salvation. Hallelujah. He is that Salvador. He is the only Savior in my life. Hallelujah. I know no other God. I will exalt you, Lord. Those who want to affirm that Jesus is your Lord. And because you're coming forward by faith, you're obeying the voice of God, God will do a mighty breakthrough in your life. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. Some of you coming up front may have known the Lord for a day, a week, a year, maybe a few years, many years. But today you're saying, God, I'm your baby, Lord. Like the little babies who don't worry about getting a job and looking to where they're going to get fed, they just trust the mother. I'm going to trust you. That's all you want, Lord. Like a baby, I'm going to come to you. Some of you never did that. You can be in the crowd too. God knows your heart. Jesus died on the cross for you publicly. Remember that always. He said, I don't care what people think. I don't care what happens to me. I love you. And I'm dying for you to take away your sins. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're going to sing, just as I am, just as I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. What is plea? Everybody knows what a plea bargain is. When you're at the mercy of the judge, mercy of somebody else, what can you bring? What is your plea? Will the court accept it? Heaven's court will accept only one plea. Through the blood. Hallelujah. Somebody paid the price so I don't have to pay it. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you. Jesus. I don't have to pay for my healing. Hallelujah. I don't have to pay for my healing. By his stripes I'm healed. He was beaten and bruised so I can be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have to go on a pilgrimage somewhere halfway around the world and climb up some mountain and begin to meditate and hope I can reach whoever's out there. Jesus is in this house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I can help you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus says, surrender Jesus. your life to thank me. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now we'll change you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain. Think about it. People go to a water fountain and they want to drink. But there are fountains in other places where they go to get refreshed. They wash their face. That fountain is bubbling up from the ground, from the earth. And they can wash their hands, they can wash their body. God says, the only fountain that I have that can wash you from that pecado, that sin, that grief, that guilt, that shame, that brokenness is my blood. There's a fountain in Israel that blood comes and washes me clean the moment I believe. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the, say that, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus I'm going to ask you a question. What can wash away my sin? What's the answer? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? What's the answer? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You got to say it. You got to believe it. Sometimes the devil will try to put a lock on your lips. You know why? Because the moment you start saying it, something's going to happen to you. Hallelujah. I have confessed with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I'm born again. Hallelujah. Man believes in his heart unto righteousness. You know why? The Bible says, whoever confesses it's not going to court and confessing a crime, but it's confessing before God, Lord, 
I don't deserve your mercy, but I thank you that you love me anyway. And you want to give me a cleansing today. I will confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I'll believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead after he died on the cross. That's all we have to do. Somebody says, how do you get born again? What does it mean to be saved? What does this talk about redemption and become a child of God? Very simple. In Romans 10, 9, 8, it says, 10, 9, 10, it says this. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, just say it, but also believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You know what the Bible says? You'll be saved. You mean I don't have to work and try to clean my... No. Hallelujah. God says, confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He's no longer dead. He died on the cross and now he's at the right hand of the Father. He's coming back for me. That's all it takes. You will be born again. You'll be saved. But you got to believe in your heart. What can wash away my sin? Let's sing that again. What can wash away my sins? Nothing, Nothing but, but the blood of Jesus. Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we can sing that song. God's going to move those mountains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many have been cleansed Jesus, by the blood of hallelujah. Jesus? Hallelujah. How Thank many of you have blood bought, washed by the blood of the Lamb? When the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. I want to be there, Lord. Lord, I want to be in that number. When, when the, the saints, saints go marching in, oh, when, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, Lord, take me to Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in to heaven. Oh, when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, you know what God said? if you're saved, if you're saved, God is going to use your life. That's what we heard in the message. To go and save other people from darkness, just tell them what Jesus did for you, and that God's going to snatch them out of the darkness. That's all it takes. God's got an army marching through the land. Hallelujah. God's got, got an, an army, army marching through the land. land. Deliverance, Deliverance is their song. song. They have healing, healing in their, their hands. Hand. Everlasting joy. Gladness in their hearts. And in this, this army, army I've got a part. Hallelujah. Oh, God's got an army marching through the land. To deliverance is their song With healing in their hand Everlasting joy Gladness in their heart And in this song we are God apart Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Let's shout hallelujah to the Lord, hallelujah He saved us He didn't save us to put us on the shelf He saved us to go out into the world And show this dying, cruel hurting world the love of the Savior oh what a privilege aren't you glad you're in God's army I am there's nothing I'd rather do than be a soldier in the army of love God's army hallelujah by faith we're going to conquer mountain you got to move yes Lord yes Lord let's sing that again mountain with faith with faith with faith hallelujah mountain you got to move oh mountain you got to to move, I speak right now in the name of Jesus.
Jesus, I made up my mind. I'm going through all mountain. You gotta move all mountain. You got to move. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. Mountain. You gotta move. Whatever's holding him back from Jesus, oh mountain, you gotta move, oh mountain, you got to move. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. I made up my mind. I'm going through, oh mountain, you gotta move, oh mountain, disease, you got to move. I speak right now. You gotta move. Finances. Some people are having a hard time. Prospering. God says I can give you prosperity. You gotta move. Hallelujah. We're gonna sing one more time. And think about this. If you want prosperity from God, you gotta move. Your mind, your body, your family, your job, your finances, everything. In the name of Jesus, I made up my mind. I command it to go. Hallelujah. Every block, mountain. You gotta move a mountain. Yes, you got to move. Cause I speak right now in the name of Jesus, mountain. You gotta move. Hallelujah. Mountain. Oh God. You gotta move. Mountain. You gotta move. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. To Jesus. I want to tell you the power of my God. I've seen this happen. God is able to change the heart of someone you can't talk to. God is that powerful. God is able to get through to someone you can't get through to. Hallelujah. He is God Almighty. He knows how to get people's attention. Hallelujah. And we know from the scriptures that he does that because he loves us. Oh, a parent telling a child, come home where you have shelter, warm meal, all the love and protection security you need. Don't go out there. It's a cruel world. Come home. That's what God says. You've been out there. No matter what age we're at. He says, come home. I'm going to give you everything you're looking for. Everything and so much more. Thank you, Father, for this service, Lord. Oh, God, Satan. Satan is defeated. Hallelujah. Satan is lost. Hallelujah. God is victorious. Hallelujah. God has given us the victory this day. God will continue to manifest his glory in our midst as we humbly believe him like a little child and say, God, I'm going with you. I'm going with you. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you Peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit rest and remain with us all now and until we see Jesus face to face. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Have a blessed week and a blessed uh, evening. God bless you all.